what started off as a bad night in my eyes, you know, in a in a not necessarily a black eye for boxing, but it started it, it actually this night actually ended up being pretty good. Um you know, we have PBC on NBC, uh Danny Garcia versus Lamont Peterson, and then Andy Lee versus Peter Quillen. Um you know, I would have loved to see Errol Spence, you know, on a nationally televised event, not just on the fight call, but I'd like to see him on TV. I think he I think he, along with Terrence Crawford, is gonna be uh, you know, they they they're gonna be top five pound for pound in the world. But like I said, it started off bad for me. You know what I mean? Because, you know, let's let's be honest, Peter Quillen not being able to make weight. You know, and, and and it became a non-title fight. So, you know, Andy Lee got free reign to do whatever. Win or lose, he was still going to keep his title. And he got a little bit of extra money. You know what I mean? But, you know, I think Quillen had to pay 500 k for coming in overweight, you know. But, so, you know, and then I couldn't stand the fact that Danny Garcia... Versus Lamont Peterson, no titles was on the line, and at the same time, they was fighting at a catchweight of 144. Based on the way, the unofficial way, is both of them, for real, for real, came in at, uh, what, Garcia came in at 152, and, you know, and Lamont Peterson could, he could easily, he could, based on, he weighed in at, what, 144, and gained 20 pounds on the scale at the unofficial weigh-in before he stepped into the ring. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is, though. But uh, let's get into it, though, man. The P, uh, first off, you know, Peter Quillen versus Andy Lee. You know, the fight ended in a draw. And to be honest with you, I'm not mad. I'm not mad in the least bit because of the simple fact that you know the loser can only blame themselves. It was too. It, it was too much time of inactivity. And to me, Peter Quillen is more to blame for this being a draw more than anything because he has two 10-8 rounds. So if he has two 10-8 rounds and Andy Lee still boxed him to a draw, then that's Quillen's fault. You know what I mean? Um, Andy Lee, I mean, I mean, we all know his story. I mean, the man just makes a habit out of coming back. He just starts so slow, man. He starts so slow. And Peter Quillen was getting it in, in the, you know, in the first in the first quarter of the fight. And that's what he was supposed to do. Start off, you know, start off smash, jump on uh, Lee. But Lee is just, he has a habit of making a comeback. And that's exactly what he did here. Um... The loot, you know, Andy Lee has to be mad because you know he fell for the okie doke early, and caught them two knockdowns. All right, he probably could have won if he could have won at least one of those rounds, ten nine instead of instead of him losing ten eight. Then that probably would have made all the difference in the world. But he, like I said, he can only blame himself, and Peter Quillen can only blame himself. Why? Because he didn't finish the job. And he allowed Lee to out to simply outbox him the last five, six rounds. So nobody can be mad at that decision because they messed it up for themselves. And on and on another note, if if Peter Quillen, if Peter Quillen gets into the ring with Triple G. And he want and he wants to trade with Triple G like he traded with Andy Lee. Quillen is gonna get washed. Real easy, real quick. He's gonna get washed. All right. I'm not the biggest Triple G fan, but I'm but I'm you know I'm clearly smart enough to know that he's gonna get washed should he get in the ring with Triple G trying to exchange. All right. The main event for the night, 
Danny Garcia versus Lamont Peterson. All right, now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of people think that Peterson got robbed. I'm here to tell you, heck to the nub. P Peterson did not get robbed. If Peterson got robbed, then he has no choice but to blame himself. Um, because of the simple fact that, you know, you have to understand something. He was potch. He, it was no effective aggression from him during the first part of the fights. It was not a effective aggression at all. I understand he, you know, he wanted to, you know, flip the jab, and you know, and basically use the entire ring. The sweet science, I understand, and I'm totally behind that. But what he has to understand, he has to set the pace a little bit, and he didn't set the pace. And he gave away early rounds to Garcia when he should have just been like, nah, let me let, let me let me win at least one of these first quarter joints, then turn it back up. You know what I mean? That's what he should have done. Um, Danny Garcia, you know, he he won this not because of his skill level. He won this be, because Lamont Peterson gave away too many early rounds. Um, you know, but his but but on another on so. Peterson did not get robbed. He robbed himself. So y'all fall back, man, before saying Peterson got robbed. Okay. This was not a situation like a Mauricio Her 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 Herrera situation where we can clearly see that, you know, Danny Garcia was outboxed. Right. Okay. Now, we've also, we also learned a valuable lesson about Garcia. Even though he can no longer compete at 140, it he has to move to 147. He is proven without beyond a shadow of a doubt to me. That he's not ready for 147. Now, understand something. Lamar Peterson is by no means a big puncher. Excellent boxer, but he's not a big puncher at all. If he was able to get in Danny Garcia's chest, what you think them boys going to do at 147? I mean, seriously, what do you think is going to happen at 147 to Danny Garcia if he allowed Lamont Peterson to dig in his chest? Danny proved that for, he's not very good fighting off the back foot. The, Lamont Peterson's defense was made to look spectacular against him because Danny Garcia is slow. He has power in his hands, but the speed I just did not see tonight because, dude, like, Peterson was just slipping punches, dog. He was slipping them. He was slipping them. And it was a few times where Danny Garcia got frustrated because he just couldn't hit Peterson. So, you know, and Danny Garcia, you know, he's, he, like I said, he's slow. He has he has little to no lateral head movement. His hand speed is like a C plus B minus. You know what I mean? His footwork his footwork is good. He has he has a good foundation, but you know his you know will I don't think I don't think his power man you know is not gonna translate well at the higher weights. He's literally going to grow into one forty seven to be ready to fight at one forty seven. He really, he he really is. I don't, I don't, I don't, I understand why he's. I understand all the catchweight fights now, because me personally, I'm pushing for Danny to do 147, but his skill, his skill level tells me that he's not really ready for 147, based on the performance I have seen tonight. You know, but you know, y'all tell me what y'all think. You know, um. I you know I I looked at I looked at both of these fights you know very 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 I was very you know interested but I, I didn't do a prediction video for none of these because I really wasn't that excited but you know but what turned out to be garbage to me actually ended up being a great night for boxing so y'all get at me comment like subscribe all right to the next one I'm out.